When I was in high school, my younger brother and I shared a bedroom. His bed was on one side of the room and mine was on the other. My brother was an avid sleepwalker and would also talk in his sleep all of the time. Sharing a bedroom with him, it was unsettling at first, but I eventually got used to it. One night, it's about 3am and I suddenly wake up from a deep sleep, instantly alert. I had this urge to look towards my brother's bed. I felt a presence in the room. When I turned my head, I saw a tall, skinny shadow human-like figure and it was reaching its hand down towards my sleeping brother's face. Its hand got maybe an inch away before its head jerked to the side and looked at me staring at it, frozen. The shadow then faded and moved up into the air, vanishing through the ceiling. Immediately, my brother shot up out of his bed, stood, and walked to the light switch. He turned it on and looked at me. In a very calm and solemn voice, he says, Did you feel it? Did you feel the hand he then turned off the light and went back to his bed? I hid under my covers the rest of the night. My brother doesn't remember any of it. When I was about 7, my grandma was super into camping. She has two cabins now, too, so she got us walkie talkies. I had a friend across the street that I loved playing with, and we had the idea to test out these walkies with a game of hot and cold hide and seek. Eventually after the games were over, we were all in the same room when our walkies were tuned into and we heard a faint whisper of a little girl. It was muffled, but I promise you that this hasn't left my mind in years, I remember it so vividly. Come find me. Me and my friend stared at each other. The walkie pack came in five, but the two we had were the only ones with batteries in them. It repeated again, but with more clarity. Come find me in the pantry, the only place we assumed the voice was talking about was the pantry, which was a pair of sliding metal doors with slits in them, much like a locker, in the laundry room. We opened it, but it was only food. It repeated again a couple times, before stopping away, or becoming unintelligible. It was infrequent in the intervals it was happening at was seemingly random, but interrupting conversation over what the heck happened. We did talk over the walkie to ask who this was, but there was only the, in the pantry, as a response. Needless to say, my grandma happily trashed those walkies and got new ones. And as if that wasn't like goosebumps mating with the creepy pasta enough, I believe shortly after my friend's family started moving away from the cul-de-sac my grandma was in. I haven't been in contact with them since. I was staying over at a dorm for a week long high school field trip, this facility was known for its strange occurrences. Each room had two twin beds, but we each got our own. After the lights out calls, my friend and I would communicate through knocks against the walls, since we were in adjacent rooms. Most of the kids had moved rooms, as we were staying in the section with a lot of activity. Me and my friend were the only two staying in this section. The third night in after the the lights out call, we do our usual knocking routine. We stopped after a while and I started to drift to sleep, then I heard rapid knocking coming from his wall. I didn't sit up because I assumed he would stop and go to sleep, but the knocking continued up the wall and onto the ceiling directly above me. This confused me greatly as I was on the very top floor, I flip over and face the wall, utterly terrified. The hallway lights remain on throughout the night, but absolutely no one is allowed to leave their rooms. However, footsteps approached my dorm door and I saw the shadow off of the wall of someone just standing there. Then the footsteps continued inside of my door, but the door did not open. Then the footsteps and whistling continued until it was right behind me. Then it stopped. I whipped my head around only to find nothing, but then I saw the shadow of someone outside my door. Then it ran away to the dead end side of the hall. I opened the door only to find no one. My friend next door had heard everything from the footsteps to the knocking and he thought it was me the whole time. This was my first ever strange experience that I could not find an explanation to. I was 16 and home alone when I heard an old man's laugh. I didn't have music playing or anything, so it wasn't that. I immediately called my mom and waited for her outside to come back home. She told me that she saw a silhouette before she burnt some sage. It was a creepy evening. I was so scared I slept with my mom that night. 
I'm being 100% serious when telling this story. This happened over the course of about a month or so. My friends and I started a Minecraft server. After two weeks, give or take in, we decided to try to spawn the notorious hero Brine. We did the netherrack with a gold block spawning ritual thing. We had mods for the game, but they were just basic, slight modifications. None that included the mysterious ghost who haunts our Minecraft worlds. Of course, right when we did the spawner, nothing happened. Bummed out, we returned to base, at the time, it was just my friend Dakota and I our base was actually a massive stone castle, really just s giant box, where we had separate houses. As soon as we entered the gate, there was a sign that said something along the lines of, you don't know what you just did. I just wrote it off as Dakota trying to troll me. However, this was just the start of it. Shortly after, we began seeing even more creepy stuff. Crosses, with a grave dug in front of it. Random forest fires. And crazy sand pyramids in the desert. Intrigued, I started reading about Hero Brian and came to the conclusion it could be him. But Dakota was quite the troll, so I have a creeping suspicion. Until one day, I was alone in the server. While out trying to find wolves, I noticed a figure in the trees. I just sat and stared. I was mortified. I reached for my phone to grab a picture, I heard me get hit, looked up and I was dead. Almost immediately after, my computer restarted itself. I don't really know what happened or how. Something similar happened to a newer player to our server. Dakota logged on one day and said he was teleported to the nether, and when he arrived, saw the ghost and was promptly dropped into lava. I can't speak to what my friend said, but I saw what I saw. We deleted the world shortly after these events. I'm still super cautious playing Minecraft alone today. Okay, so this happened when I was a young teenager. My friends and I loved the paranormal and we had always wanted to contact ghosts. One day, my guy friend, let's call him Jay, makes a Ouija board and ends up contacting a ghost named Day. A seemed paranoid for his safety whenever Jay talked to him, so we decide to have a group Ouija board session. We come prepared to make sure we have a safe session. Candles, salt, lavender, we didn't have any sage. We start the session, and immediately, things go wrong. The ghost we contact is called T immediately after we contact him, an air of uneasiness filled the room. We ask what he is, and he spells out proxy on the board. After a searching, we found that proxy is someone which represents for someone else. He represents something much more evil. Right about then, we hear a loud bang from the closet. My two friends, J and P, go over to look. I stay behind as to not end the session without saying goodbye. They both come running out screaming. P says that they saw a tall, skinny, all black shadow creature with white eyes and tiny pupils. We all freak out and end the session there. We go upstairs to get holy water, and when we come back, the board and the stuff around it had been thrown across the room, with everything a mess, and the planchette, which we had taken off the board, right back on it. Subsequent investigations reveal that A comes in darkness and T comes in light. So we always kept the lights out so we could talk to A. They also reveal that T wants to drain the essence of my two friends, who share a last name, but aren't related. We all are really worried, so we keep an eye out for anything unusual. The most we got was more sightings of T from time to time, as well as a ghost that was the inverse of T, all white, with black eyes and white pupils. We thought it was A, trying to protect us. Eventually, we get the house smudged and the sightings stop. We've all moved on, but it still gives me the shakes when I think about it. My mom and dad are divorced. I lived with my mom but would visit my dad on the weekend. My dad lived in a house with my uncle, they were renting it, and the house was pretty nice. I remember my uncle telling me that the previous owner of the home killed himself. I thought my uncle was pulling my leg but soon realized it could be true. I'm a gamer and usually I wouldn't go to bed till 2 stroke 3 in the morning. My bedroom was the first bedroom, if you were leaving the kitchen and going down the hallway, the hallway was long and turned a corner. 
The house had a crawl space under the house, so the floors were wood and made noise when walked on. Every night, I would hear heavy footsteps walk past my door over and over. I thought it could be my dad, uncle, or one of their girlfriends. One night, I heard those footsteps and needed to ask my dad a question. So I opened my door and peered out. The kitchen was pitch black. At this point, I felt I was being watched from something peering down the hallway. I looked down the hallway and nothing there but the feeling was still there. I closed my door and locked it. As soon as I start playing my game, I hear the footsteps again. I went to bed soon after and hid under my covers feeling whatever it was, now was in my room watching me. I got used to it and we moved years later but the new house brought more paranormal things. The doors will sway open and close by themselves and I would check for any draft in the room or hallway. My father's bedroom door would forcefully slam shut and again, no draft. I never got used to this paranormal event as it was seeming to be aggressive.